Hello everyone. So now we will understand the second order circuit by the concept of damping. Okay. So first tell me it is second order circuit. How it is second order circuit? If I give V1 voltage to this capacitor, can I write the voltage across the capacitor C1 in terms of the input voltage and V1 or in terms of any known voltages? So there are only two known voltages that is 5 volt and that is V1. So can I write the potential? No, because of this register, right? If the, the register, if this register was not there, my circuit would have been first order only. Okay, but now this is second order. Well and good. So this is a second order circuit. Okay. Now, now I need to first I will check the value of V naught at t equals to zero plus and at t equals to infinity. So tell me what is the value of V naught at t equals to zero plus and V naught at t equals to infinity. So at t equals to 0 plus, this circuit will be shorted, this capacitor will be shorted, this capacitor will be shorted. So what will be the condition? R1 and that's it. Is there any infinite current? No. Is there any unknown volt? Is there any uh, unknown node? Unknown node voltage. Open-ended node that we saw in some previous examples. Is there any open-ended node? No. There is no open-ended node. There is no condition of infinite current. So simply your V0 will be 0 volt. Tell me your V0 at t equals to infinity. At t equals to infinity, this will be open circuited, this will also be open circuited. So, what will what is the condition? This is resistance R, this is open circuited, this is also open circuited, and this is a resistance R2. This is R1, this is R2. This node is open circuited. So tell me, is there any condition of open-ended? No, there is no condition of open-ended. Because here the current is zero, that means this this will be 5 volt, this will be zero, because the zero can travel from this resistor to here. And if this is 0, this will also be 0. And this is 0, then this is also 0. There is no open-ended. Open-ended will come in this condition. In this condition. If, if both of them are open-circuited, if this is also open-circuited, then what will happen? You know that 5 volt will travel here. So this node is 5 volt and this node is 0. But you don't know the potential of this node now. Although you know that current here is 0 ampere. You know that the current here is 0 ampere. But what is the potential of this point? You don't know. If you know the potential of this point, the same potential will be at this plate as well. But you don't know the value. So that's why this is the condition of open-ended. And how to solve this circuit, we have already seen. Right? So V0 at t equals to infinity will also be 0 volt. Because this 0 will this zero will be carried here. So 0 and 0. V0 at t equals to infinity is also 0 volt. And now you have seen that this is a second order circuit. So how will your response go? Your response cannot go like this from 0 to 0 like this. This is how the response will go. No, it can't go like this, right? So now you have to check in second order circuit what we do. We check damping and for damping what do you need? The location of poles. What you will check? You will check the damping, right? And for damping you need the location of poles. Now, if you remember, I will ask you, okay, if there are two different poles, that means it is overdamped. If there are two poles, but at the same location, that means it is critically damped. If there are two conjugate poles, that means it is two conjugate poles. That means it is what? Underdamped, right? In underdamped, there are oscillations, but they will die, die out. In overdamped, it will be a slow response and in critical damped, there is no oscillation and it will be a faster response. And in overdamped as well, uh, in overdamped as well, there is no oscillations but a slower response. So this all we have studied, right? In RLC circuit and LC circuit. So now I have to find the location of poles. Okay. So I will just tell you a method how to find the location of poles for a second order circuit. Okay. So for a second order circuit, first thing is that you can't find the exact location of pole. Okay. So here I will note down one thing for second order circuit. You can't find the exact location of pole intuitively. Of course, by transfer function you can find, but you can't find the exact location of poles intuitively. By transfer function you can certainly find, but intuitively you can't find. How will you find? Intuitively, if you you will find approximate poles. You will find approximate pole. Approximate 
Broke's location of pole. So what is the method? First consider the one capacitor. Let us just assume I am considering C2 capacitor. I will consider only C2 capacitor. I will short C1. I have shorted C1. I, I will also short the voltage source. So across C2, how much re resistance I can see? R1 parallel with R2. So minus 1 by C2 R1 parallel with R2. What did I do? I consider only one capacitor at a time. Let's just assume I am considering C2. Right? If I am considering C2, I will short circuit C1. C1 is shorted and voltage source is of course going to be short circuited and if, the, if there was current source, it was going to be open circuited. Okay? So voltage source is going to be shorted. So across C2, what do I see? R1 parallel with R2. So this is my exact location of pole 1 and what, sorry, not exact, so approximate. And what is the approximate location of pole 2? I will consider only C1 now and C2, C2 will be shorted. So across C1, how much resistance I will see? Only R1, right? And the switch is closed at t equals to 0. This I forgot to write. Yeah. So here 5 volt is shorted, here C2 is shorted. If C2 is shorted, R2 is also shorted. So across C1, I can only see R1 only. So minus 1 by R1 C1. Now tell me one thing. These poles are equal or unequal? There are two poles. Both of the poles are unequal. So in S plane, how will you show it? This is sigma, this is j omega. Two poles are there, both are unequal. Anywhere there can be omega p1, anywhere there can be omega p2. It all depends on the value of r1, r2, c1, c2. Right? So omega p1 and omega p2 can, can be there. So what kind of system is that? This is overdamped system. Right? And what is the response of overdamped system? Response will be something like this. V note I am drawing versus time t. So it will start from 0 and it will go to 0. Now the task is it will start from 0 and it will go to 0. Now the question will be will it go like this or like this? So this is my question. Think about it and, and tell me how it will go. This one or this one? It will go from 0 to 0, but from negative or from positive? Come back to the circuit. At t equals to 0 plus, what is the direction of current in capacitor C1 and C2? At t equals to 0 plus. At t equals to 0 plus. This is 5 volt here. This is resistance R. This is capacitor C1 that is shorted. This is a resistor. And this is the capacitor C2 that is shorted. This is the condition, right? This is R2, this is R1. Now, this is shorted. That means the current that is flowing is 5 by R1. In what direction? In this direction. And in this capacitor, the current is flowing 5 by R1 in this direction. That means both C1 and C2 are getting charged. Both C1 and C2 getting charged that means that means what vc1 will be positive and vc2 will also be positive and if vc2 is positive that means v naught will be positive so what is the correct graph this is the correct graph this is wrong okay so this is your final graph okay you know one thing it will go from 0 to 0 but you have to tell why it is going from positive, not from negative. So if the interviewer asks you this question, what you will do? You will first tell this is a second order circuit. Initial and final value are zero. But this, since this is the second order circuit, now I will check the damping. If I check the damping, I can see the approximate location. And there are two poles. Both are unequal. If both are unequal poles. So simply, I can see that it will be an overdamp system. Now it will go from zero to zero. It can, it can go from positive side as well. It can go from negative side as well. But what I see... Initially, at t equals to 0 plus, what do I see? At t equals to 0 plus, what do I see? The current in the both of the capacitor is positive. Right? That means the capacitor are getting charged. That means the voltage will 
rise. So it has to go to positive. Now no one will say that it can go like this. It can go like this. Will you say that it can go like this? First it is positive, then who knows after some time it can go negative. Right? People can say that. First it will go positive and who knows after some time it can go negative. If it, if it can go negative like this, then it, it will not be overdamped system. There is these oscillations. In overdamped system, there is no oscillations. Right? If you say that, first it will go like this and then like this. No, it won't happen. Why? Because there are no oscillations. If it is positive, it will remain positive. If it is negative, it will remain negative only. So, this is the condition of overdamped. Go to my point. In overdamped system, you can never see these kind of responses. Like, right? That's why either it will be completely positive or it will be completely negative. So, it is completely positive now. So, this is the overdamped response and this is the final answer. Okay. This is the correct and this is wrong. Well and good. Understood? Let's move on to the next circuit. Here you need to tell me the V note waveform. Okay. First, tell me the order. If I give V1 voltage to this, V1 voltage to this, can I write the v2 voltage in known in known variables what are what are my known variables 5 and v1 can i write the voltage across c2 in known variables no because of this register if this register was not there i could have written so this is simply a second order circuit okay now tell me the value of v0 at t equals to 0 plus and v0 at t equals to infinity quickly tell me at t equals to 0 plus c1 c2 will be shorted right is there any condition of infinite current no at t equals to 0 plus this is 5, this is resistance R, this is shorted, this is resistance R2, this is also shorted. So the current here is 5 by R, the current here is 0, you can say. Okay. So there is no current, no condition of infinite current. And no open end is there. So it will be 0 volt. And at t, at t equals to infinity, what will happen? Both capacitor will be open ended. This is open ended, this is also open ended. So both capacitors are open ended. This is R1, this is R2, this is V0. So, this 5 volt will go here. So V0 will be 5 volt because there will be no current. If there is no current, that means V0 will be 5 volt. So, from 0 to 5 volt, it will rise. Now, the condition is what kind of damping is there? So, tell me omega P1 approximate. Because of C1, I am considering. So, because of C1, what will be the approximate location of omega P1? Across C1, 5, 5 UT will be shorted, C2 will also be shorted. So, across C1, you see. C1 R1 parallel with R2. What about omega P2? For omega P2, across C2 you will see. So, across C2 what do you see? C1 is also shorted, 5 UT is also shorted. So, across C2 you only see R2. So, this is, this, these are unequal pole, unequal pole. That means it is overdamped. Right? So, overdamped it is and it is going from 0 to 5 volt. But I am making it as a slow response. Right? Why? Because it is a overdamped. From 0 to 5 volt. Okay? Overdamped response. Well and good easy question at t equals to 0 you found at t equals to infinity you found then you can see the approximate location of poles because of c1 r1 parallel with r2 is coming and because of c2 only r2 is coming okay so both are unequal pole and the system is overdamped and since the system is overdamped that means it will rise from 0 to 5 volt well and good easy question let's move on to the next circuit this one similar kind of circuit which we saw in the first example just RC combination is replaced. Okay. So, tell me the value of V0 at t equals to 0 plus. V0 at t equals to 0 plus. Is there any case of infinite current? No. C1 is shorted, C2 is shorted. So, simply 5 UT will travel across V0. So, 5 volt. V0 value at t equals to infinity. Is there any condition of open-ended? Is there any condition of open-ended node? No, there is no condition because 5 volt will be carrying here. Right? 
and this same will be carrying to V0 as well. So, from 5 volt to 5 volt we are going. C1 is open, open circuited, C2 is also open circuited. So, this is the condition. 5, 5 volt here, this is resistance R1, this is resistance R2, this is open ended, this is V0. So, this 5 volt will reach here as well, here as well and this is 0. So, there is no condition of open ended, right? Well and good. So, your V0 is rising from uh, 5, not, not rising, from 5 to 5 it is going, okay. Now, you need to tell me the damping. So, what I will say, omega P1, because of this capacitor C1, what will be the location, not the exact location, approximate location, approximate location. So, because of this capacitor C1, C2 will be shorted, so across C1 what you will see, R1 parallel with R2, so, minus 1 C1 into R1 parallel with R2. What about omega P2? If C1 will be shorted and this will also be shorted, that means across C2 you only see R2 only. Minus 1 by R2 C2. That means it is overdamped system. Right? Overdamped system. So from 5 to 5 it will go. Now there will be one more interesting question in this analysis as well. So it is going from 5 to 5. Right? This is 5 volt. This is 5 volt as well okay this is final one this is your v naught now my question will be will it go like this or will it go like this so i should use a different color of pen will it go like this or will it go like this which one is correct goes like this then this will be your steady state from that which one is correct let's just call this one as a this one as b so which one is correct b is correct why so in all the examples we have seen in network analysis have you ever seen output voltage greater than the input voltage have you ever seen the output voltage voltage across any capacitor greater than the input voltage the supply is 5, how can you get more voltage? You can get more voltage, but if it is a non-linear circuit, our circuit is linear. It is, it is linear bilateral circuit. So, in linear bilateral circuit, you will never see your output voltage or potential at any volt, potential at any node greater than the supplied voltage. Got my point? So, if this ha would have been the case, you are getting more voltage than the applied voltage. It can never happen. In case of, in case of what? Bilateral linear circuit. Okay. In case of bilateral li linear circuit, you will never get, you will never get the voltage more than the applied voltage. Are you getting my point? If you use a diode somewhere, if you use a diode somewhere, because that is a non-linear element. So, if you use diode somewhere, you can get more voltage. In LC oscillator, we saw that in one example, I guess we got 200 voltage there. Okay, we applied 100 volt and in some example, we got 200 volt. Why so? Because we used a diode there. Okay, so in linear, in linear bilateral circuit, you will never see more potential than the applied potential. So, which one is correct? This one is correct and this one is wrong okay so from 5 to 5 it will go for, but like this okay so what do i write in bilateral linear circuit you will never see more voltage than the applied voltage okay but there is one more thing that is in undamped system in undamped system you can see more voltage like in lc oscillator in lc oscillator if you, we have seen the examples in LC oscillator, at some times we were having 
here initial voltage was 100 volt and there was some applied voltage as well. So at some time we can have 200 volt. Okay. So in undamped system we can have more voltage. But in underdamped, overdamped or critically damped you will never have more voltage. Okay. In underdamped as well you can have more voltage. In underdamped it will go up and then it, go, it can go like this. So I will write if there is no damping. If there is no oscillations if there is no oscillations if there are oscillations then you can have more volt but not for infinite time but for a particular time only because in overdamped system what happens sorry in underdamped system the response goes like this so there you can have more voltage in uh, in undamped the response goes like this okay so there you can have more voltage but in case of underdamped Sorry, in case of overdamped and critical damped, you will never have more voltage than applied voltage. So your apply voltage, applied voltage was 5 volt. So the maximum voltage that you can have is 5 volt only. Okay. So the lower one is correct, upper one is right. So in linear bilateral circuit, you will never see more voltage than the applied voltage if there is no oscillations. Okay. If there is oscillation, then you can see. But only for a particular moment. Okay. In diode circuit, we will study clipper circuit clamper circuit so in clamper circuit you will see that your output is more than the applied voltage okay and that is there because of the diode okay so that we will see now these two circuit analysis i want okay this versus this so i want waveform v naught one and v naught this is v naught one v naught one and v naught and in this case as well, I want V01 dash and V0 dash. Okay, the same input is applied. So try doing it on your own. First, tell me how will the V01 waveform look like? And for V01, it's a first order circuit or second order circuit. What is this? This is unity gain buffer. I hope you remember it. Unity gain buffer. And there is no unity gain buffer. So this is a unity gain buffer. So tell me what will be your V01 by V in S. V01 S by V in S. It will be 1 upon SRC plus 1. Right? My V01. My V01 S by V in S. I am solving this circuit. It will be 1 upon SRC plus 1. Right? What is the order? First order. How you can see? The, the current that is flowing in the resistance are the same current is flowing in the capacitor C as well. This is simply a first order circuit. That's it. So how will the response look like? Okay, the response I will draw here. Let's just call this circuit as circuit 1 and this circuit as circuit 2. So we are doing the analysis of circuit 1. Okay, on this page we are doing the analysis of circuit 1. Now tell me what will be your V0 S by V in S? What will be your V0 S by V in S? 1 upon SRC plus 1 into 1 upon SRC plus 1. Right, so 1 upon SRC plus 1 whole square. So tell me what kind of damping is that? What kind of damping is there? There are there are two poles all at same point right so what kind of damping is that this is a critically damped system right critically damped right so now i can draw both of the waveforms I need to put the charger first. Yeah. So what about V01? V01 T. And then I will write for V0 T versus I. This response is going to be exponential. And from 0 to 5 it will rise, right? From 0 to 5. Initially 0 voltage, at steady state it will be 5 voltage only. Right? At steady state this will be open circuit, this will be open circuit. So 5 will travel. So here 5, here also 5, here also 5. So 5 will travel. Right? So from 0 to 5 it will rise. Now 
right now v not t and this response is exponential exponential sorry now this response is not going to be exponential since this is critically damped this will rise very quickly right this will rise very quickly and this is critically damped damped okay let's see the circuit too v not 1 dash at t equals to 0 plus it will be 0 volt only v not dash at infinity it will be 5 volt v not dash at t equals to 0 plus it will be 0 volt only short circuited and at v not dash at t equals to infinity it will be 5 volt only so both will rise from 0 to 5 now tell me for this one is this first order and for this one is this first order or for both of them it is second order my question is for v not one dash is it first order or second order and for v not dash is it first order or second order in this case we could clearly see it was first order why because there was this buffer in vote now there is no buffer for v not dash one for v not one dash right there is no buffer so for simply for v not one dash this is the circuit for v not one dash this is the circuit here you are having your v not one dash. Do you agree? For v not one dash, this is the circuit actually. Do you agree to my do you agree to my point? R, C, R and C in series. And v not one dash you are collecting here. So this is the circuit for v not one dash. So what kind of circuit is that? First order or second order? This is a second order circuit only. So for v not one dash, I will draw the circuit more clearly. You can see something like this. A circuit is something like this only. This is your V not one dash. This is R C R C, and this is your V in. Okay, and this is five volt, right? So initially it is zero, and infinity it is five volt. Right? So this is a second order circuit. Now can you tell omega P1 and omega P2, whatever it is. Omega P1, omega P1, let's just uh, find it because of this capacitor. So because of this capacitor, this capacitor will see two resistances in parallel. So it will be minus 2 by RC. This capacitor will see R and R in parallel, so R by 2, so minus 2 by RC. What about omega P2? This capacitor will see this capacitor will be shorted and this voltage source will also be shorted so this capacitor will see only this resistance so it will be minus 1 by rc so two different poles that means over damped right it is an over damped system and if it is over damped the response will go like this Right? What about for V naught now? V naught 1 dash. V naught 1 dash. Sorry. This is V naught 1 dash. We are talking about V naught 1 dash. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is V naught 1 dash. Okay? V naught 1 dash. Okay? We are talking about V naught 1 dash. Now V naught dash. Now for V naught dash. For V naught dash. What is the condition? R, C, and R, C. tell me omega p1 value 
what will this c see this c will see what will this c will see this c will see r1 and r2 the same location of poles will be there minus 2 by rc and omega p2 will be minus 1 by rc right although if omega p2 is greater like if omega p2 is greater than value then this should be omega p1 and this should be omega p2 i hope you have understood what i am saying like this is your minus 1 by rc this is your minus 2 by rc so this will be your omega p2 actually and this will be your omega p1 right so this i was saying so yeah so this will also be over damped So V not one, no sorry, V not dash. V not dash will be something like this, right? And this will go to five volt. Now this is your V not dash. This was your question. This was your V not dash. This was your V not, right? So which one is the faster response? For V not dash, we are having under damped system, but for V not, we are having critically damped. For V not, we are having critically damped. In circuit one, we are having critically damped response, and in circuit two, we are having over damped response. So which one is faster? Critically damped is faster, right? So for V not, we are having for V not, or I can write circuit one for V not. Bracket circuit one. We are having critically damped response. Or V not dash circuit two. We are having over damped response. That means circuit one is faster. Faster. Okay, so the circuit one is faster. Well and good. Now I will ask one more question. So listen to the question very carefully. Okay, in the in this circuit, what does it feel like? It feels like this that first this capacitor will charge, and this voltage will be given to this capacitor, and then this capacitor will charge. Right? This is how it feels like. First this this capacitor will charge, and then the other one will charge. This is how it feels like. Right? Or I can call C one and C two. So what does it feel like that first C one will charge, and then C two will charge? So my question is, which capacitor will reach steady state first? Which capacitor will reach steady state first? We know one thing that both of the capacitor are going to be charged at five volt. Both of the capacitor are going to be charged at five volt. Okay, we know that. So which one will reach to the five volt first? My question is, which one will reach to the five volt first? Think about it, take your time, and then answer. Okay, so you must have thought about it. So what does it feel like? That first capacitor C1 will charge, and then it will charge the capacitor C2. So it feels like that C1 will be reaching the steady state first, and then C2 will reach steady state first. We know one thing that VC1 infinity is five volt, and VC2 infinity is five volt. It feels like Capacitor C2 is being charged by the voltage across capacitor C1. So that means 
सी वन शुड रीच स्टडी स्टेट फर्स्ट राइट दिस इज वॉट इट फील्स लाइक लेट्स चेक लेट्स चेक इट ओके लेट्स अज्यूम सी वन हैज रीच इट्स स्टडी स्टेट लेट्स अज्यूम सी वन हैज रीच द स्टडी स्टेट बिफोर सी टू Seven has reached the study state before C two. That means I can assume that V C one is my five volt, and my V C two is somewhat four point nine, four point nine volt, and this is five volt. I am saying that C one is reached study state and C two is not haven't reached study state yet. Okay, so now what will be my circuit? I am having five volt here. I am having five volt here. This is my resistance R. This capacitor C. This capacitor is charged to five volt. This is my other. This is C one. This is my other resistance R. And this capacitor is charged to four point nine volt. This is my C two, and it is charged to four point nine volt. This is what you assumed. So tell me. This is five. This is five. That means there is zero ampere current along that way, right? From here there is zero ampere current. Now this is five. This is four point nine. That means what is the current here? Zero point one by R. If the current here is zero point one by R, that means this zero point one by R charging this capacitor, but it is discharging this capacitor. So you said that you have reached the steady state. You are saying that my five volt is fixed. Now if you absorb the circuit. You get to know that there is zero point one by R current flowing out of the capacitor C one. After observing the circuit, what did I see? I see that zero point one by R current is flowing out of the capacitor. That means capacitor C one is getting discharged. This is not the steady state. First, I assumed that it is the steady state. If it is the steady state, that means C one is having five volt, and I I assumed that C two is not at steady state. so if it is not steady state that means it is having 4.9 volt so that means across c2 0.1 by r current is flowing and across c1 0.1 by r current is flowing outward so here i can see c1 is getting discharged so here i can see that c1 is getting discharged right c1 is getting discharged so this is not the steady state of if it was st steady state that means no charging no discharging in steady state there is no charging of capacitor no discharging of capacitor so this is certainly not a steady state this is certainly not the steady state for c1 that means your assumption is wrong assumption is wrong okay the assumption is wrong why so because we got to know that 0.1 by r current is flowing out of the capacitor c1 so it can't really happen so the assumption that you made that is wrong okay now what if i see what if i say that c2 will be reach steady state first before c1 so across c2 i will be having 5 volt across c1 i will be having 4.9 so that means Point one by R current flowing will be in opposite direction. That means C two will be getting discharged and C one will be getting charged, right? So the second condition is not also possible. So only possible condition is that both C one and C two will and both C one and C two both C one and C two will reach the Steady state together. Okay, both C one and C two will reach the steady state together. This is actually the conclusion. Okay, so it feels like that 
C1 will reach the steady state first and C2 will reach the steady state later on. Because they can ask you to draw the waveform of V0 one and V0 two. How V you will draw? You will draw like this. That it has reached the steady state and it will reach the steady state later on. But both will reach the steady state together. They then they will ask you the question which one will reach the steady state first. Then you will say that V0 one will reach the steady state first. But this is not the condition. Both will reach the steady state together. We have seen it here. Okay. And the, there is one more way from where from where we can see it. Here, what did you, what was your approximate location of poles? This was your approximate location of poles. Minus two by R C, minus one by R C. What is the approximate approximate location of poles for V naught dash? So for both V naught dash and V naught one dash, approximate location of poles are same. So the circuit will behave same as well. Okay. Although this is not a accurate explanation, but you can also think like that as well. Why it is not accurate? Because these are approximate location of poles. If you find the real poles, these poles will be different. Okay, these poles will be the poles because of this this system V not one dash and the poles because of this V not dash will be different. In if you find if you find the exact pole location, but in approx pole location you are you are getting the same location of the poles. So if the same location of pole is there, that means there is the same kind of system. If there is same kind of system. That means they will reach the steady state together. So these are the all possible questions that can be asked from second order circuit, and we have seen the body plots as well. The, these questions can also be asked. But in interview, they rarely ask the second order circuit. But nowadays, the uh, nowadays the scenario has been changed, so they are asking more second order circuits as well. Okay, so you should be comfortable with the second order circuit as well. And I hope I have I have taught the second order circuit very deeply as well. Now we will see that time domain analysis of second order circuit. So let me just tell you that will be your a kind of complete revision. Okay, in one circuit you will see ten twenty concepts. Okay, so it may feel like that this is a very tough concept, but let me tell you if they ask you second order circuit and you do this analysis, this is not the complete time domain analysis. Here we studied it by the concept of damping. Now in the next lecture I will not even take the name of damping. I will do the complete analysis by time. At t equals to zero, this is happening. At t equals to zero plus, this is happening. This current is increasing. This current is decreasing. Okay, this voltage is increasing because of this voltage. Something is happening. Something is not happening. So there you will require very high concentration and very high concentration, and that will be a very very good concept. But even if you answer in the interview by this concept, okay, then they will be more than happy. If you tell them the damping and all these things, they will be more than happy. Okay, so here you can end your chapter as well. If you have, if you don't have time, just don't watch the next video. That is not that much necessary. If you don't have time, then you don't need to watch that video. If you have time, you can watch. Okay, so that is not the necessary video, but still you can watch. And if you have watched till here, that means you are good to go to the second part now. Okay, so this this is the completion of the first part from my side. Okay, thank you.